welcome back to Zoo Adventures. Hope you enjoyed your intermission so you can get some snacks and all that. Now we're going to start looking at the ibises. I noticed when we were in the ibis exhibit, I saw some ducks swimming in the water over by the corner but in this exhibit. But we didn't get any pictures of them. We just got pictures of the ibis. Here are some of the species of ibis that are around today. African sacred ibis, Australian white ibis, American white ibis, the scarlet ibis, black ibis, straw-necked ibis, glossy ibis, and the northern bald ibis. There are 28 extant species of ibis, and there are two extinct species of ibis. Thank you for watching the Ibis chapter. Now I'm sure you're getting tired of land and sea animals, so let's get started with the airborne animals. <laughs> Welcome to the Lorikeet chapter. The Lorikeet is also known as the Lori. The Lorikeet is a small, medium-sized parrot. A small parrot is called a parakeet. In the lorikeet exhibit at the Oregon Zoo, you can you go inside and there's all these lorikeets and they're all flying at you and all that. And you can feed them apple juice. You can get a little tub of apple juice and feed them apple juice. So you might see me feeding them apple juice in the movie. So let's start our adventure with the lorikeets. Let's start with the different types of lorikeets. The black-winged lori. The green naped lorikeet, the scaly breasted lorikeet, the olive headed lorikeet, the yellow streaked lori, musk lorikeet, dusky lori, blue streaked lori, Josephine lorikeet, and papan lorikeet. The green naped lorikeet is also known as the rainbow lorikeet. Now, this lorikeet is a very smart one, but a very naughty one. It uses its feet to drink it, so it doesn't need my help feeding it. It is very independent. And now, the lorikeet dance. Watching the Lorikeet chapter. Now I'm sure that some of you are afraid of bats because they are very spooky, they're black, they have fangs, but they're not all that scary. They eat insects that bother us like mosquitoes. Bats are nocturnal animals. That means they only come out at night. Even though they have eyes, they also use sonars and smells to see. So they use three senses to know where they're going. Bat sonars can track down a moth from a, from a couple meters away. It snatches the moth and has its nice mothy meal. Yum. Another English name for the bat is called finner mouse. A whole bunch of bats is called finner mice. 
which matches their name in other Germanic languages. For example, German Fledermas and Swedish Fledermus. One of the biggest bats I've ever heard of is called the flying fox, which could probably go up to three feet long. The only time when bats cannot see very well is when it's daylight. This is when they cannot see, they have trouble with their sonar, and they are having trouble smelling. So one time a bat got in my house and it went bonkers on the walls. So it couldn't really see. So bats cannot see in the daylight. They see better at night. That's why they sleep during the day. When bats are born, they're only a couple inches long. When you hold them in your hand, they seem very small. Probably not to a kid's hand, but probably to a grown-up's hand. Thank you for watching the bat chapter. The sun bear, sometimes known as the honey bear, is a bear found primarily in the tropical rainforests of Southeast Asia. Also in Bangladesh, Myanmar, Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, Southern China, Peninsular Malaysia, and the islands of Sumatra and Borneo. The diet of the sun bear consists mainly of invertebrates and fruits, but as omnivorous they will eat a wide variety of foods, including small vertebrates such as lizards, birds, and turtles' eggs, the young tips of palm trees, nests of bees, berries, sprouts, roots, and coconuts. In fact, sun bears have been observed to eat over one hundred insect species and over 50 plant species. Despite being able to eat many species, the sun bear has certain favorite food sources. This was demonstrated in one study where termites, ants, and beetles and beetle larvae made up the majority of the vertebrates eaten. Whist figs were the most important food source consumed. For those of you that do not know what consume means, it means eat. The sun bear's fondness for honey gives rise to its alternative name of the honey bear. In Malay and Indonesia, it is known as the Barang Madu, which translates to honey bear. Adult sun bears have almost no predators except humans due to their fierce reputation and formidable teeth. Occasionally, they may be overwhelmed by tigers or large reticulated pythons. Other possible predators include the leopard, the clouded leopard, and the sun bear's larger sympatric relative, the assistic black bear. The sun bear's loose skin around its neck allows it to wriggle up and bite its enemy when attacked. Thank you for watching the Sun Bears chapter. And now, off to the turtles. The largest living turtle is the loverback sea turtle, which reaches a shell length of 200 centimeters. This great turtle can weigh up to 2,000 pounds. The, in the Greek drachma of Aegina, they put turtles on coins. They also do this in the Maldai coin, the coin of the Ukraine, and the coin of the Russian Federation. Turtle plastrons, the part of the shell with, that covers a tortoise from the bottom, are widely used in traditional Chinese medicine. There's According no to statistics, Taiwan imports hundreds of tons of plastrons every year. A popular medicine preparation based on the powder turtle plastron and a variety of herds is the Galimgago jelly. These days though, it's typically made with only herbal ingredients. The giraffe is an African even-toed ungulate animal.
land mammal. The tallest of all existing land living animal species. And the largest ruminant. The name giraffe has its earliest known origins in the Arabic word zirafa or zirafa, perhaps from an African name. It appears in English from the 16th century on, often in the Italianate form giraffa. The giraffes are herbivores. Herbivores mean they only eat plants. If it was a carnivore, it would only eat meat. If it was an omnivore, then it would have the choice of both worlds. Even though they are herbivores, they two males, when they meet each other, sometimes battle each other. So some of them are not that friendly. Anyway, thank you for watching the giraffe chat. The meerkat or Surrey cat is a small mammal belonging to the mongoose family. Meerkats live in all parts of the Kalahari Desert in Botswana, in much of the Namib Desert in Namibia and southwestern Angolia and in South Africa. A group of meerkats is called a mob, gang, or clan. A meerkat clan often contains about 20 meerkats, but some super families have 50 or more members. Meerkats have an average lifespan of 12 to 14 years. If you look at meerkats a certain way, they are much like people. They have babysitters, teachers, and guards. By the way, if you want to see where the zoo is, it's in Portland. A monkey is a primate, either in an old world monkey or a new world monkey. There are about 260 known living species of monkey. Many are arboreal, though there are species that live primarily on the ground, such as baboons. Monkeys are generally considered to be intelligent. Unlike apes, monkeys usually have tails. Tailless monkeys may be called apes. Incorrectly, according to the modern usage, thus the tailless barbary macaque is called the barbary ape. Let's explain the relationship of humans and monkeys. Many species of monkey have varied relationships with humans. Some are kept as pets, others used as model organisms in laboratories or in space missions. They may be killed in monkey drives when they threatened agriculture or used as a service animals for the disabled. The first animal to ever go into space was a monkey. Then, that's when they started using humans. There's one in the bed. Have you ever seen a monkey picking off things from another monkey's back? This monkey is picking, well, not the monkey in the picture, but the monkey I'm talking about. It would be picking another monkey's nits and parasites and put it in its mouth and eat it. Yum. Welcome to the tiger chapter. I thought that we could do something special because this is the last chapter. The tiger, a member of the Felidae family, is the largest of the four big cats in genus Panthera. The tiger is native to much of Eastern and Southern Asia and is an apex predator and an obligate carnivore. The larger tiger subspecies are comparable in size to the biggest extinct fields, reaching up to 3.3 meters in total length. Weighing up to 300 kilograms, 660 pounds, and having canines up to 4 inches. Here's a picture of the tiger. You can see him laying down over here. Now, goodbye guys.
Thank you guys for watching my movie. It was nice of you. Well, I'm gonna go. I'm got some science fiction movies to make. Thank you for watching this movie. Bye.